This video is all about our vegetable garden. I will show you everything we do to make growing vegetables efficient and a joyful experience. We will have a look at the layout of the garden, how we maintain a high level of soil fertility and many more details about working in a no-dig permaculture vegetable garden. Our vegetable garden is about 150 square meter in size and located on the eastern edge of our property, which is also the sunniest area in our garden. It is surrounded by the chicken composting area, where we produce all the needed compost, the passive solar greenhouse, where we start all our seedlings, and the polytunnel, where all the seedlings get hardened off. What is easily visible from above is that our vegetables grow in long beds with a curved shape. The shape of our beds is no coincidence. They follow the contour lines of the property, so that the beds and the pathways are level. So when it rains, the water can't flow away quickly because of the level surface and therefore has more time to soak into the soil. The pathways between our beds are mulched once a year with a layer of wood chips. The wood chips help to keep some moisture underneath the paths, which plants can use to grow, and they suppress weed seeds from germinating that we bring into the garden with our shoes. To be able to cross garden beds easily, we laid some concrete plates every few meters. These plates also help us to divide the beds into smaller areas that have a convenient size for vegetable growing. Next, let's take a closer look at how the chicken area interacts with the vegetable garden. In this area, our chickens help us to make a lot of high quality compost. If you want to know more about the compost making process, check out my video about our chicken composting system. But compost making is not all how our chickens help us with vegetable growing. They are also our weed and slug patrol. I simply open a small gate and the chickens can enter a long but narrow area between the vegetable garden and the edge of the property. Here they prevent weeds from growing into the vegetable garden and eat all the slugs that cross their way. They also drop their rich manure which then gets swept into the vegetable beds with the next rain. So our chickens convert weeds and slugs into a fertilizer for the garden while producing nutrient rich eggs for us. To thank them for their work, we use some of that fertility to grow a lot of sunflowers that we then can feed back to our chickens as additional feed. So what else do we do to maintain a high level of soil fertility in the vegetable beds? First, we never till the soil. We mulch it with a 3 cm thick layer of compost once a year instead. In this way, we do not disturb the life in the soil and don't dig up weed seeds that would otherwise germinate once they reach the surface. That's why you have fewer weeds if you don't till the soil. Undisturbed soil can also hold a lot more water because its structure stays intact. And as a bonus, you get fungi spreading in your vegetable beds, which can transport nutrients and water to your vegetables from quite a distance away. In summer, we additionally mulch with grass clippings so that the soil stays moist also during long dry periods. But we only do that in thin layers so that we do not create lots of slug habitat. What is very important for this method to work is that all roots from the harvested vegetables stay in the soil. The roots will then decompose, leave aeration corridors behind and therefore decompact the soil. The next thing we do to keep our soil fertile is that we try to have plants in the soil as often and as much as we can. Because the microorganisms in the soil rely on trading with plants for sugars. And if there are no plants, the soil basically has to feed on itself and therefore becomes less and less. So we always try to have some seedlings ready when gaps appear in the garden. I use a dibbler to make the holes and then simply pop the plants into the soil. This is a very fast way to plant a lot of seedlings. In September, once we harvested all the big crops like potatoes, pumpkins and melons, 
I don't need all the space in the garden anymore. And that's the time I seed all the unused space to a mixture of cover crops. I use a seeder for this purpose, cause it saves me a lot of time and I get a more even result. I only sow plants that die with the frost in winter, so that I don't have a weed problem next year. After a few days, the first leaves will appear on the surface. The cover crops then grow very fast and within a few weeks they accumulate a lot of plant material and enrich the soil with many nutrients. Then, in November, I take my sickle and chop all the plants down to create a dense mat of mulch. The roots of the cover crops stay in the ground. Then, during winter, both the roots and the mulch will decompose and therefore become food for the life in the soil. A few months later in early spring, you will find the most amazing soil under what is left of this layer of mulch. The next vegetable plants then thrive on the fertility of last year's cover crop. If you work like this for a few years, the fertility of your garden will go up significantly. In our first year, we planted four pumpkin plants, which together yielded about 30 pumpkins. Now we are in our fourth year, and I only planted two pumpkin plants, which still managed to take over half of the garden and yielded 20 pumpkins each. To further make the most of the available growing area, I do a lot of interplanting and multi sowing. Interplanting is a method where you sow or plant the next crop in between finishing crops. Here you see me plant garlic in between some finishing salad plants. In this way I gain a few weeks of growing time with every crop I plant. As interplanting helps you to use your growing space efficiently, multi sowing makes you use your propagation space more efficiently. With this method you put 2-5 to five seeds instead of only one seed into each cell of the seed tray. I do this with beets, leeks, onions, radishes and a few more. Once the plants have grown, you then always harvest the biggest one in the clump and then wait for the next plant to grow bigger. This stretches the harvesting time, which is another advantage of multi-sowing. But in order to be able to harvest anything at all, we need to take care of our vegetables while they are growing. Our healthy soil helps a lot in that regard, as there are only very few weeds to pick, very few slugs to find and we only have to water our plants after several weeks of drought because our soil holds water so well. However, what healthy soil doesn't help with is protecting our vegetables against all kinds of flying insects. So we still cover all our brassicas, carrots, onions and garlic with insect netting to prevent butterflies and fruit flies to lay their eggs close or onto our vegetables. We also planted a variety of flowers and herbs to attract beneficial insects which helps that our vegetable garden ecosystem stays healthy and diverse. So this is how we grow our vegetables in our permaculture vegetable garden. It's a joy to work in our garden because the workflow is so smooth and tasks like weeding, watering or slug removal take only little time as these are rarely needed. If all works out well, we always have an abundance of healthy food to harvest in our garden and we can cook complete meals from it. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. I very appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.